According to this, can I, can I just can I just come past? Can I come next to you? Sorry. Says, it says that Heraclius asked the question. He asked, does anybody amongst those who embrace his religion become displeased and renounce the religion afterwards? Yeah, I he replied, I know. No. no. Right. Right? But that's so, a so, lie. See this no that, that's a lie. See Heraclius. Can I just can I just say this this is a hadith in Bukhari where there was the uh, interaction between Abu you, So I can pick you up on my own. I'm, 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 I'm a bit unwell at the moment. Fair so enough. I don't want to pass I, it. I'm on, willing you know. to risk it if you I, I, I don't I, I, I don't want it. It's been quite serious for you. Three weeks okay. I've been unwell, no, I don't want to no pass on to no you. Um, this interaction between Abu Sufyan yeah. and Heraclius. Yes. And he went to him, he, he asked him about the Prophet Muhammad. So I said him, like, he was, is he this and is he that and whatever. Um, and then, like you said, it came to this question. Does anybody who embraces the religion, what does it say? Renounce the religion. Are they yeah. displeased and renounce it? Yeah. This, this, um, when this, when this question was asked, if you look at the timeline, like when, when the interaction between Abu Sufyan and Heraclius was, yeah. as far as I know, you can verify this and you can correct me, but I, I, I'm confident this is, this, is, this is correct. This was prior to the event of this man apostatizing. This, this, the, the, you know the Sahaba you said, like you said about the yeah. scribe? But not before what happened in Ethiopia. Sorry? Well, not before what happened in Ethiopia with the Sahabi who apostatized in Ethiopia. Yeah. I, with regards to the timeline, to be honest with you, the one that was spit out from the grave. And anyone found it yet? <laughs> and, also, and, also, and, also, and also, Bob, it's possible, it's, it's possible as well that Abu Sufyan, yep. the news of somebody apostatizing in Ethiopia had not reached him. Right. So that's a possibility as well. A, but, but it's also possible that he lied. Who lied? That he knew and that he lied. Who, who lied? Who, who, who? Abu Sayyid. Abu, Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan. Yeah, Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was not a Muslim. Right. Okay, so you're saying he wasn't a Muslim? No, at right. that time. Abu Sufyan was a, he okay. was a leader of the, the, uh, Mus uh, the opposition of the Muslims. Okay. So, when after, we do history... After, after the, battle of the, first, the Battle of Badr, yeah. the Muslims had... Okay, Against the, uh, the Quraysh, yeah. the, a lot of the prominent leaders of Quraysh died, and Abu Sufyan took over as the leader of the opposition against the Muslims. Yeah. When he had the interaction with Heraclius, he wasn't a Muslim himself. Okay. Right. Let's uh, let's just pull this up. He became a Muslim later on after the Sulh Hudaybiya, when there was the uh, tr treaty between the Muslims and the, and the pagan Arabs yeah. before the conquest of Mecca. So, so he was not in a position then to answer the question, was he? Abu Sufyan. Yeah, at that time. What's, what, the question where he said, does anyone renounce the religion? Yeah. Is anyone displeased with it? He couldn't answer that question. Because if you're saying mm. that he might not have known yeah. that someone from Ethiopia mm. had left Islam, right. which is a reasonable, step back a bit, if you don't mind, it's a reasonable argument, yeah. right? then logically it follows that right. he wasn't in a position to answer the question. Right. Agreed? Abu Sufyan, if he's not fully aware of all of the it, affairs yeah. of the Muslims, he can't please. say He can't say that no one leaves it if right. he doesn't know I mean, it's, someone left it's, it. it's fair to say, it's fair to right. say, yes. Yeah. But that means when he said no one leaves it, he was yeah. speaking in error, wasn't he? It's perhaps he was. Right. Now, that ends up being a deceit. He's now lying to Arabs. Yeah, but he's, he's, remember, he's a pagan Arab. He's not a Muslim. Right. But, but, you said that you as a Muslim say yeah. that someone who is a known liar shouldn't be in the chain of a Sahih Hadith. Yeah. They can be in a Daif. But, 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 they but, can be but, in maybe a Hassan. But, I don't know how the but, rules but, but I understand. I can't be a Sahih. Do you get my point? Bob, Bob, I understand. Do you get my point? I get the point. Yeah, I, 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 is, let me let me make let me make my point. We'll, we'll talk about hadiths later, brother. I want to talk to you. It's fine. But I know you're not. You don't believe in hadiths. He does. And I want to talk about the hadiths. One second, please. Don't try to hijack this conversation. Yeah, it's not fair yeah. to him. So, Go on. so Abu Sufyan, <laughs> like at the time when, when this happened, this interaction. Anyway, he's not a Muslim, right? So, of course, like anything that Islam is teaching. At that time, let, let, let's say for argument's sake he lied. Let's say for argument's sake he lied, yeah? Yeah. Or there's, there's different possibilities. It could be he lied, it could be he was unaware, and from what he, his knowledge of the, the Muslims that were in Mecca, who were uh, among them, none of them had renounced the religion. Yeah, from his knowledge of the people around him, right? So, from his knowledge, they haven't renounced the religion. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody apostatizes in, in, in uh, Britain, for example, or wherever it may be, you know, far away, he's not going to know about it. Obviously, they weren't. Do, do you see my point? He, he, he doesn't, if he doesn't know, he doesn't know. He, he's talking from his observation, and yes, it's possible he could have been, been lying, but the, the teachings of Islam, he's not 
Um, he stopped following the teachings of Islam at that time. Yeah. Do you see? Do you see my point? Right. Ab, you, you know Abu Sufyan's son-in-law um, happened before Abu Sufyan became a Muslim. So, so, what, what, sorry. What do you mean? So, sorry. Be, sorry. Before Abu Sufyan met Heraclius, right. Abu Sufyan's son-in-law had apostatized. Let me give you the evidence. Right. right? Uh, let me just. Uh, so the, the person in question is Ubaidullah B. Jash. Does that name ring a bell? Show me. Ubaidullah B. Jash. You can find this story. Ubaidullah. You can find this story in Ibn Ishaq, the life of the Ishaq. Prophet Muhammad, Ibn Ishaq. written by Gilliam, 1967. Let me read what he writes. Mm. Right. Yeah. Ubaidullah went on searching until Islam came. Then he migrated with the Muslims to Abyssinia, taking with him his wife, who was a Muslim. Um Habiba and Abu Sufyan. When he arrived there, he adopted Christianity, parted from Islam, and died a Christian in Abyssinia. So that's before that's before um, Sufyan meets Heraclius. So Sufyan went with his went with him to Ethiopia to Abyssinia. So he knew no, no, no. what had happened. Ab Ab Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan never went to Ethiopia. No. He, he, he didn't go to Ethiopia. So do you not think he'd ask questions like, why has my relative not returned from Abyssinia? But he, was, he, he wasn't there. He didn't go there. No. Do you not think, though, like, that when his relative doesn't return from Abyssinia, he might inquire as to why? Okay. Perhaps, Isn't that the yeah, normal yeah, it's thing normal. to do? Of course, it right. makes sense. Yeah. So what I'm pointing out to you is that in the text of the Hadith itself, mm. one of the source, the very source of the Hadith is seen to lie to Heraclius because he says something he knows that is not true. No, but once, does it say that Abu Sufyan, the news of his, uh, was it his son-in-law, it said? It said? Who was it who apostatized a relative, basically? A relative yes. Abu Sufyan. It says, right, uh, basically, right, hold on one second. Right. Bear with us. Yeah, he was Abu Sufyan's son-in-law. Right. So he was a relative. Okay. Now you know and I know that Arab families are tight today. They were even tighter back in the day. Like they were tight units. They still are. It's one of the things that I admire. But you know, it's, but it's possible the news of his apostasy did not reach Abu Sufyan. But by the time, what what's the gap between the the episode in Abyssinia right. and Abu Sufyan going to meet Heraclius? Do you know? The time span between this yeah. event here. Yeah, this then. event and the Abyssinia. I, I can't say I do know the exact. It's exactly worth investigating. I what, don't know what, it myself. Right. It's a good question for both right. of us to go away and investigate. Right. But well, let us let us conclude. But, but let's, but, but let just, us just, let just, us be just, charitable. Just just just, 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 the, just to emphasize. Just to, re just to re emphasize what I'm saying. It's possible that Abu Sufyan, regardless, because look, if he's gone to uh, Abyssinia, yeah. the, the the relative, and he's apostatized over there, yeah. it's possible that that news of the apostasy never reached him, regardless of the time span, even if it's two months, two years, uh, 12 years, 20, until Abu Sufyan died, the apostasy, the, the news of that kind of, of, of perhaps never reached him. That's, that's, that's right. what I'll... So, but it's also possible that Abu Sufyan's son-in-law went to Ethiopia, with his daughter, remember, because he's a son-in-law, so we're guessing the wife who was a Muslim, who is the daughter of Abu Sufyan, they stayed there in Ethiopia, and then when his daughter and his son-in-law don't come back, Abu Sufyan goes, why haven't my daughter-in-law, my daughter and my son-in-law come back? And they go, the, the, the reply is, oh, because he's become a Christian. That's more possible and more probable, yeah, but, but like, unless yeah. these two events are separate by days or weeks but like I said right so it's a, the important question is to go away and check out for both of us because I don't know either the date but let us assume let us be charitable and come to the middle ground let us say that Abu Sufyan did not know but that means that he wasn't in a position to say that no Muslim ever left the religion but again, like, and yeah. to speak to speak yeah. in a way yeah. that is erroneous and to mislead people 
example, when you've got not in a position to know, yeah. shows that you're not a reliable source right. of information. Right. Would you agree? Yeah. No. If I speak about We're things probably. that I don't know, yeah. it means that I'm not a reliable source of information. All the Muslims in the comments will yeah. say, oh, that's true, that's no, true, no, that's exactly what you're as I said, And they'll use that as an argument as against as me. As well, I'm as using as it against Abu Sufyan right now. As I said, I as I saw that. As I said previously, Abu Sufyan at that time was not a Muslim. So, so what I'm saying is, if he lied, if he did lie, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. I'm not saying that he didn't lie. Right. It's possible he did. Yeah. Let's say it's, pos it's possible he did. But for him, he did not see, like, if Islam, or if it comes to, like, for example, like the, um, the hadith and the people who narrate them and their reliability and the fact that they don't lie, they're honest people, whatever it may be. He himself, if, if, the, if he does not feel the teachings at that time of Islam apply to him, i.e. not lying, yep. you know, and whatever. Yep. Okay. And, and one, one second, and, and Frank, just give me a second. He didn't lie, by the way. No, no, I'm not saying he does, I'm saying for he argument. He never lied. No, no, no. Sorry, but I'm, I tell you I'm, something. No, no, no. Let, me, let, let me finish my point. I'm showing you that he did lie. Brother, 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 please, let me finish my point, please. And then yeah, he, he's actually at least dealing with the arguments. Go on. So, if he did lie, if he did lie, I'm not saying he did, I'm saying, okay, perhaps he did. Perhaps he did lie, perhaps you're right, you lied. But if the teachings of Islam he does not feel apply to him, and then later on he embraces Islam and he renounces his ways, his previous ways of being a liar if he was indeed right. lying then. Okay, so here's my can, can, I, can I know? No, 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 it's okay. No, I want but to talk I, to him. Can I, can no, I, no, brother, give me tries. answer for one question and I go. Very quickly, go on, what's the question? question? Please. Nicholas, did his mother follow Arius or no? I don't know. Okay, now let me come back to you. So in terms of in terms of the question. Right? Because what I'm, what I'm trying to, let me make be clear about what I'm saying to you. I'm saying to you that I've got strong evidence that your Sahih Hadith collections have a lie inside them. Now, you tell me, if I were correct, just hypothetically, if I were correct that I have demonstrated a lie inside your Sahih Hadith collection, what are the implications of that? The thing, the thing, the thing is here, if, if there's, like, because he, he's narrating, like, I, I don't know the narrator of the hadith, does it say Abu Sufyan, that Sufyan was the narrator of that particular incident, or was it somebody else who was a witness to it and was, was basically I quoting you, Abu Sufyan? I should be able to. Narration chain. Now, I don't quite know how the app lays it out, so I'm guessing it's in chronological order. Right. So I'm guessing it goes yeah. Ibn Abbas, Ubaidullah bin yeah. Abdullah bin Ulf, uh, Al Zuri, yeah. Shubay bin Al Hakam bin Nafi, Nafi. Abdul Al Yaman. So Abu Suyaf doesn't even appear in that list. Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan, Sufyan. doesn't even appear in that list. So right. I mean, I'm not. I haven't qu quite figured out how the app. What, what it's telling me here, yeah. to be so, honest. But so, that is, as you can see, narration chain. Go, That's the list yeah. of names that go, it you. Just, to, just to address the point you said, is it possible that there's a lie in your Sahih hadith? What's the implication? What's the implication? There is a lie so, I, in the hadith collection. Yeah. So let's say, for example, now, Abu Sufyan was lying. It was a lie. He, yeah. he, he, um, he actually. The news reached him yeah. that somebody had apostatized. Again, like I said before, it's possible the news did not reach him. Yeah. Now, let's say he lied. He did lie. As, as I said previously, he did not feel that the teachings of Islam applied to him. Yeah. So, even if he did lie then, it, it, it's not... That's not the question that I asked you, so let's try again. The question that I asked you was, if it turns out that I'm correct and this is a fabricated hadith, i.e. No, the conversation a, never took place in the first place, it's a total that, fabrication. That was not the question. What is the implications if there is a lie in the Sahih collection? That was the question. Try again, please. No, 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 no. Your question was not that. It was about, about fabric. you said about fabricated hadith just now. If there is you didn't, you didn't a lie... You said, what's the implications if there's a lie in the Sahih hadith? That's the question. Yes, so if basically. one of the... If one of the hadiths is a lie, what's the implications to the concept of Sahih? Like, the collection look, of Sahih? It doesn't, it doesn't affect it at all, I'll tell you why. Right, go because on, so if, if he lied, if he lied, right? No, if the entire hadith is a lie. Yeah, like, you're saying a fabric, the question was... I am, a, so let me be clear. No, 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 let me just clarify what you're trying to say. I don't well, want to tell you. I don't I'll tell you in one sentence.
sentence? No, because maybe I misunderstood. Well, so let me tell you in one sentence so you can't misunderstand. In one sentence. Go on. This hadith from beginning to end is a total fabrication. That was not your argument. That is my argument. You came into it late. If you had been here from the right, beginning, you would know that that's but, what but I was But when we were discussing it, that's not what you told me. You, said, you were saying that the hadith, the integrity, we weren't talking about the integrity of the hadiths. Well, this is what happens um, when you jump into a conversation only halfway through, is that you don't pick up well, where, I did, it, I did. where it was going. Well, that, that's, that's what you're going right, to clarify so now, me. So now this is my argument. Now, now the argument is a fabrication of the hadith. Yeah, the whole of the hadith is a lie. One of my proofs that it is a lie, shall we take a step back from the barking dog? Uh, it's okay, it's okay. Right. One of the, the, the proofs that it is a lie is that the, the one of the people in the story, let's just say wasn't a Muslim, is shown to be someone who is willing to lie. I've already explained this though. Right. I, I know what you've said. Before. I know yeah. what you've said. Yeah. You're saying that you're... he didn't know about the laws of Islam. Right. Right? right. But I would say that even a pagan knows that no, he shouldn't no. lie. No. Even a but, pagan knows that he shouldn't lie. But look. I don't think Islam's special in saying you shouldn't lie. No, no. I'm not I'm not saying that either. But what I'm saying is if he's gone from being a like because this hadith itself you're not coming I don't you're arguing, when you're saying about it's a lie you're not basically saying it's inauthentic because it's it's found in the Sahir isn't it the Sahir what I'm saying is, yeah, so what I am saying yeah. is that because this entire hadith is a lie it means but, that you cannot no, no, know no, no, no. what are reliable but, and unreliable when, hadiths. When you say it's a lie, are you saying the words where Abu Sufyan was saying that when I'm he said I'm saying the no. entire story is fiction from beginning to end. Why do you say that though? Right, Where's great, your evidence for that? great question. Where's your evidence for that? Right, so here's my evidence, my, right. my, my, my points of evidence. Point number one. Right. The source of the story is himself in the story seen to be a liar. Two, right. the hadith itself only appears in the 9th century, it's 200 years after the event. Yeah. Where did it yeah. come from? It's 200 years after the event. Three, we have no corroborating evidence that this event occurred when we can reasonably expect corroborating evidence to be there. Four, what we actually know about Heraclius flies in contradistinction to the person that is being portrayed in the story. Now, which one of those right. four so, uh, art points do you want to interrogate? So, you're essentially one, saying... The, 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 the yeah. person in the story, the source of the story, is seen to be a liar. We've already discussed that. Yeah. Two, it was it's a 9th century story, not a 7th century story. Bearing in mind it was written at a time when Muslims were fighting the Romans right. that they're writing about. Now, now let's let's just go back to point one. Uh, point, point one. I'd like to move on to point two, three, or four. Let, well, let's, let me address it as you explained it. Now you've gone. I don't want one, two, three, four to remember them okay, all. Fair enough. Fair we enough. We do it one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So point one, you're saying about the the, the person who is narrating it lying. I'm not saying he did. I'm saying it's possibly did. Right. I think he did. Right. So. If, for example, you told a lie in the past, you told a lie, yeah. and you're no longer a liar, you're truthful, and you narrate the story of the past of when you lied, that doesn't mean because you lied in the past that you cannot be trusted now. But shouldn't you tell the people you're telling the story to that at this point I lied? Like, isn't that what an honest man does? He goes, I lied in the past, right. and what I said then, here, I said this, yeah. but I was lying. Yeah. But again, we have not established. Remember when we said about this, the, his daughter and his uh, son-in-law going to Abyssinia? Yeah. We've, we've not established whether the uh, story of his apostasy had reached Abu Sufyan. Right. So it's possible that he lied and it's possible he told the truth. But, it's all, yeah, but, but it is possible. And I think what you need to do, and what I need to do as well, we need to look at the time differential between what happened, the events of Abyssinia, yeah. according to Islamic sources, right. and this event. And the and, event of Heraclius. Because I honestly think that it is quite right to assume that if Abu Suya, Sufyan, Sufyan's Sufyan. daughter didn't come back mm. from Abyssinia because she stayed with her husband who had right. converted to Christianity, yeah. that he would... 
that, that, that Abu Sufyan would go, where's my daughter? Where's my son-in-law? People, these families were tight-knit communities. Arabs depended but, but, on one another. Remember, survival. at that time, let's let's move sorry. the argument forward. Can I just can I just at that point just address your point? Like about the tight-knit communities. Yes, you're right. They were. They're very tight-knit, um, and they valued tribe over perhaps many things, tribe and family, and and and. and. So uh, when she um, say, for example. So she stayed, say for example she remained, she and her husband remained over there. Oh yeah, that's, a, that's, that's another point I was going to make, is at that time when um, the... I can barely hear you. Where the Ethiopians, when they, sorry, the, the Muslims moved to Abyssinia. Yeah. Yes, they were, the pagans were concerned about that and they sent like a, um, a representative to go and speak to the king. Yeah. So that the Muslims may be released and sent back to Mecca. So they were concerned, I'm not saying they weren't concerned with the affairs of the Muslims in Abyssinia because they did send somebody over there to try and convince the king yeah. to send them back to them. Yeah. Um, but bear in mind, that was not their main concern, the, the Muslims of Abyssinia. Their main problem, their main threat, what they felt threatened by was the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May blessings and peace of God right, be upon let, him. Let, let, let's, let's come back to the, the second, the, what we yeah. know about her. Let's come to what yeah, we know about her. Just, just let me finish this point. Because it, I, it I've, you've, made, you've given like many points. I just want to just touch on one at a time and just and we move it on from that. Um, the affairs of the, the Muslims, it was not, the spotlight was not just on them. There was stuff going on in Mecca as well. Like they had the, the, the Prophet Muhammad, they, the, you know, okay, he was... All of this is irrelevant to it's, the it's relevant. It's, it's, it is relevant. It is let, relevant. Let, let, let's the, come the, to the, the reason why it's argument. relevant, the reason why I'm saying this, I'll tell you why it's relevant. Oh, look, 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 the, let me just make, finish this point, I'll let you continue. Okay, let me just finish this point. Go on. The reason why it's relevant is because it's possible that due to what's happening in Mecca, because the Prophet Muhammad, him and his mission, what he's doing and the separation he's causing because of the people becoming Muslims, yeah. families disowning their, their, their yeah. relatives, go on, right? Go on, go on. Because of this, what's going on there, something like the news of somebody apostatizing. They not, oh, oh sorry, like uh, being this concerned. This is his daughter, bro. But hear, hear this, hear this. <laughs> the con his concerns with what's going on in Abyssinia may be, not be tantamount to what's going on in Mecca at the time. Well, well, be, be honest, if your daughter disappeared, wouldn't you ask a question yeah, but, where she is? But remember, that at that time, that was perhaps, ir for him, for him, for Abu Sufyan, not as important as what's happening in Mecca. Well, you, people will have to decide whether, whether if, you know, people love their children. Anyway, let's move the argument forward because what we do know about Heraclius is this do you know anything about Heraclius do I know anything about him yeah what, what do you know about Heraclius um, apart from this story do you know anything apart from this story? about Heraclius I mean, I mean, I guess from I have not read, you know, too deep into the the history of the um, East uh, Byzantine Empire, Eastern Byzantine Empire, and their leader. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my, my knowledge is as far as it, as far as. Uh, okay, so let, let me. Oh, at this point, the, the, the beautiful bit about this section of the conversation, mm. all you're going to do now is increase in knowledge. Just going to tell you a little bit about Heraclius. Okay. Right. I mean, this is this is why we, you know, the, the should be the intention of all of us when okay. we come here. So Her, uh, Heraclius was born in Cappadocia, six four one. What, what's the sources that you're reading uh, from? I'm by using the way? Uh, Britannica. Okay, the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah, the, the Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, he was an Eastern Roman emperor between six ten and six four one. He reorganized and strengthened the imperial administration and the imperial armies. Uh, but lost, obviously, Syria, Palestine, and Egypt yeah. uh, to the Muslim conquest. He was born in eastern Anatolia. Um, let me just move on to... Yeah. In 610, Heraclius dropped the emperor of Constantinople, deposed Phocas as emperor, and was crowned uh, emperor of a crumbling empire. Okay. Shall we move away from the shouting person? Uh, where to? Um, shall we move over there a bit? No worries, sure. Guys, we're going to move over there. Do you want to grab your camera? 